from everyone that made this conference possible. You know why you think you came here, as do we. But Our Lady sometimes draws us to a place because she's got a job for us to do. And when you go away from here, she's going to let you know just what that job is. Because we can't stop working now, we have to just keep our nose to the grindstone and do whatever it takes to bring about the consecration of Russia. It's been far too long. It's been, I think, uh, oh, what is it, 93 years at least since Our Lady said, consecrate Russia. Why hasn't it been done? And that's why this conference. We do have one con common denominator as to why we are all here, and that's love of Our Lady. And we know there's something lacking and something important has to be done. And we are all going to work together to make that happen. Can't is not in Our Lady's dictionary and it must not be in ours. So we're going to work, roll up your sleeves, you're going to learn, you're going to listen, and you're going to go out and spread that to the rest of the world. When there's enough people, a grassroots swelling, to plead to the Holy Father, he will listen. Right now he's surrounded by politicians and all kinds of reasons why he thinks he cannot do the consecration. Our job is to make him know not only to think he can, but to do it. I've scribbled a few notes down here, so I don't forget some important things I have to tell you. And the first thing is that consecration now, it's a conference that can turn a page in history. And again, I don't like the word can or think. It will turn a page in history. It's a conference that can be instrumental in bringing around true world peace in this war-torn world. It's a conference to inform the people, and particularly our Holy Father, that he does have strong support worldwide to make the consecration of Russia requested by Our Lady of Fatima. I would like to take just a moment to pay special tribute to those who did make all this possible. We have many people worldwide that are our supporters, and they have prayed, and they have sacrificed, and they have donated. I'm sure you can imagine the expense of bringing a conference such as this to Rome, put it on the World Wide Web, and on television. Uh, we're launching our own Fatima TV television now. Everybody told us, are you crazy? How can you do that? In Rome, you don't even understand Italian. But we did it. And because we have faith and trust in Our Lady, all we know is it seemed like a good thing for her, do it. Don't question it, just do it. And that's what we want to impart to the Holy Father. We hear, well, there's politics in the way and all these reasons why he must feel he cannot do the consecration. Surely he knows about it. He knows what Our Lady requested. Why isn't he doing it? It takes a five minute prayer. Five minutes. Maybe it's too easy. Maybe that's why he figures, oh, that can't possibly change the world. That can't convert Russia. That can't bring world peace. That can't save millions of souls. A five minute prayer? But wait a minute. Who's asking us to do this? It's not another politician, it's not a president. It's not me, it's not even Father Gruner. It's Our Lady. And not only Our Lady, God himself sent her to give us this message. He gave us a solution through his Holy Mother. Why aren't we doing it? Why aren't we trusting in her? Why isn't the Vatican trusting in her? Forget what the politicians say, it might offend somebody. Or we think maybe it's already done. We didn't follow the formula. If you leave things out of a cake you're making, it's not going to bake, you're not going to have a cake. Who are we to leave world, words out of our lady's request? 
the world. Well, we consecrated the world. Well, when you baptize a baby, you don't baptize the world. You want to baptize that baby for a reason. So how can these people that are so knowledgeable think they can change Our Lady's word? If they change mine, okay, fair game. Maybe I didn't know what I was talking about. But to change Our Lady's words is to change God's words. And I don't think that's a good position to be in. What's more, it's not putting any of us in a good position because we will suffer from either annihilation or enslavement under a regime that is godless. And God knows, well, we have the stamina to stand by Christ if they say, if you don't deny Christ, we're going to kill your children, your mother, your grandfather, your loved ones right in front of you. All you have to do is just say, I don't believe in God. Oh, we think now it's easy for us to stand here and say, oh, not me, I'm not going to deny God. But there are a lot of people that maybe haven't prayed enough or had people praying for them. They're not going to be in that position. They will think they're doing the right thing by denying God to save their brothers and sisters. They won't know better. And those people, those are the souls that are in jeopardy. So every day we lose doing our job and bringing about the fulfillment of Our Lady's request. Every day, more souls are lost. You see what's happening in the world. Sin is, it's run rampant. It's increasing, it's escalating at a, at a serious degree. It's, it's a frightening degree, the sin around the world. So it's so important every minute we lose, more souls are gone. That's why we can't say, well, Our Lady said eventually one day the American heart will triumph. We can't wait for that, because if we wait, how many of our brothers and sisters will be in hell watching it? It's not going to do them any good then, it's too late. So we have to act, and we have to act now. I'm reminded too, I hear, we're asking the Holy Father, Trust our lady, just trust her. You have the faith of a mustard seed, it's all it takes. Trust her, just do as she says. God created the stupendous miracle of the sun so we would believe. He knows what we're like. Well, we're kind of skeptical. I, I don't know if I really believe that or not. You can't deny the miracle of the sun, witnessed by over 70,000 people and cures and the torrential downpour of rain, and immediately after the miracle of the sun, they're not only dry, but the mud they were in when they fell down on their knees, they thought it was the end of the world at the moment, and when they got up, even their clothes were clean. I don't know if before in history there's been such a miracle like that. God went to an awful lot of trouble so that our little pea brains could believe Hey, this is coming from me, God. This is important. That important to create such a miracle. And I sent one of my most treasured, if not the most treasured possession, I sent my holy mother to give you a message because you guys screwed it up in the world there. You look at the world and what it is today. But God is so loving, he gave us another chance, another chance, another chance. He's given us now the supreme chance. All we have to do is listen to his mother, a five minute prayer. Now a lot of our people who write into us and call into us, when they knew we were coming to this conference because they're the ones that helped sacrifice and prayed and gave donations to pay these expenses as I mentioned, they all thought, oh, if I only had two minutes to talk to the Holy Father, what would I say? And so on behalf of them, what they have to say is this, Holy Father, please, all we're asking for is a five minute prayer. Asked for by Our Lady of Fatima, endorsed by God himself. We're not asking for millions of dollars to do it. It costs nothing but a five minute prayer. He doesn't have to pay for the TV time. They'd love to do it, they'll give it to him free. So what is causing this to happen? And that's a culmination of why this conference is so very important. 
the experts from around the world we have here are going to tell you things you didn't know. And I dare say they're going to mention or lean towards things that will help you understand why isn't the Holy Father doing this? There will be a lot of reasons, but the normal person like myself still says, okay, you've got your reasons, but why aren't you trusting Our Lady? If you're afraid this is going to happen, that's going to happen if you do the consecration, don't you understand Our Lady will mitigate all that? You, you don't have to be afraid of anything if you do what Our Lady asks you to do. It's a matter of, as we're always taught as Catholics, follow God's will. We're not going to be jeopardized. We're not going to be annihilated. We're not going to be uh, offending the Russian people if we do what God asks us to do. He's not out to offend them. He's not out to cause other problems because we did what he told us to do. It is so simple. Yeah, here all of you are with all these insurmountable, the other people will say insurmountable problems, as to why the consecration maybe can't be done or hasn't been done or has already been done. All of that is a fallacy. All of that is not trusting in God and not trusting in Our Lady. Now I have been watching the news lately and everyone is speaking about this earthquake that's supposed to be hitting Rome in a couple of days. Some people are very frightened about it. And I found I'm not frightened about it. But I know it's because they trust in Our Lady. And I'll tell you a little story that happened to me some years ago, back in Fort Erie, and we had our statue here of Our Lady. I always feel safe when she's there. And uh, so we had all these hurricane warnings. Oh, huge hurricane was coming our way, batten down the hatches, be prepared. So I was working in the office, and uh, Father Gruner was away, everybody's away, just Our Lady and me. So I thought, well, okay, hurricane's coming. So I waited and waited. It didn't come. And I thought, oh, must have gone a different direction or something. False alarm, it didn't come. So I looked in the newspaper the next day, and it did come. But if, you, if I can kind of point it out from up here, if this is Fort Erie, where Our Lady is, in our little office there, and this is Buffalo, New York, and these are all the cities on the other side of it. Okay, we're there, and it showed the path of the hurricane in the newspaper, and devastated all down through here. It literally showed on the chart, it went around here and continued the straight pathway. That is where Our Lady of Statue was. You don't think she protects her dear ones? Well, I'm not saying I'm one of her dear ones, but I certainly hope so. I certainly must try every day as hard as I can to be one of her dear ones. The Holy Father is a dear one. I'm sure one of her dearest ones. And what we want to do is have the Holy Father think about that. It's simple. Put everything else out of his mind. Trust in Our Lady and obey her. And that example of the hurricane, and look what happened in Hiroshima devastated from the bomb, except this one house standing there right in the middle of all the flattened devastation. Why? They were praying the rosary. They had a scapula and a rosary on their door. They were untouched, their house was untouched, but everything was flattened around them. And anyone who did survive would have died from radiation within days or moments, and they never had any effects of radiation. God gives us so many miracles so we can know he's there and he'll help us. And we have to stop ignoring them. And I dare say, we want the Vatican to stop ignoring them. Just forget everything and listen to Our Lady of Fatima. So I leave you now uh, with one more thing, is I'd like to pay special tribute to Father Gruner, our leader. Although I don't use the word can't, it would be almost a can't do if Father Gruner weren't our leader. Most of you who know him know he's given up his whole life for Fatima. He works tire tirelessly day and night, and uh, without his leadership, certainly we wouldn't have gotten as far as we've gotten. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, 
Also, our workers here, our employees, the volunteers, the workers, they've worked night and day for weeks before we came, weeks here, or days here, I should say. And uh, it's taken everybody together. It's taken you to make it happen, your prayers and your well wishes, and your being here to sort of pick up the flag of Our Lady and carry it forth. I have just a couple of announcements here. Is one of the things we're going to do, as, as I mentioned, we have our own television station now, flagship for Our Lady in Rome. We can put a plea to the Pope every day on that station, 24 hours a day, and we're not going to give up. It's also going to be on the World Wide Web for this conference and on a couple of other television stations, which uh, will be on the posters out there. And a lot of people come up to me and they say, well, I'd like to express something I wanted to say or some little miracle I experienced to show have trust in Our Lady. So we will have a video camera set up just outside the room here that you can come and record a two or three minute, perhaps plead to the Holy Father or um, a recount of a little miracle Our Lady has done for you. And if possible, we might have it throughout the conference. It depends on the timing, but we can also show it on our television station. It, it bears witness to the people who don't know about this, they're not sure what to believe. It all helps hearing about God's little miracles, big miracles, and faith in Our Lady. Good morning, friends. You are really friends, I mean it. And uh, my name is Paul Horai, the retired Bishop of Lesotho, was ordained Bishop, no, consecrated. Since I'm going to speak about the consecration of Russia, was consecrated Bishop 4th of July. 1970, and now I'm a retired bishop, but B is just the same. So this morning, my theme will be mainly on the Russia, the chosen nation. And that choice, our ladies has indicated how it should be done. And we're going to spend most of the time on that. For the Lord, God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants, the prophets. This is from Prophet Amos. Chapter 3, verse 7. A bishop is a prophet. Therefore, allow me to lead you into the secrets of God. I want you to know that there's nothing that this world can offer you that can compare to knowing that God exists, that he loves you with a love and he loves you with you that with love that nobody can understand. Our weakness is that we reject that great love. God sees that the church and the world are in a very terrible crisis. He offers us his helping hand and we reject it. I invite you 
to stretch out your hands, our hands, to the almighty loving God and allow him to lift you up of the abyss and put you on the way to heaven. Let us study together the miserable situation in which we have put ourselves and follow the heavenly guidance to salvation. In the past, God spoke to us, spoke to his people through the prophets. He then spoke through the Messiah, his son, Jesus Christ. During our time, he speaks to us mostly through his mother, the Virgin Mary, through many apparitions. The world and the church are in a terrible crisis. God is giving us the way to bring things to normality through Our Lady and the Mother of Jesus and our Mother who is our Mediatrix. We must work like Jesus Christ. We must speak like those who have power, like Christ. It may be because we do not seem to believe that priests are Christ, the supreme, eternal priest. We must teach the world to take the priest as such, to teach the priest to live as such, like Christ. We must become zealous apostles of the good news. My technician, come here, please. Technician, please. Down. Then uh, God chose St. Paul as his chosen instrument to bring his name to the pagans and pagans' kings. And before the prophet of Israel, we read this from the Acts of the Apostles. Chapter 9, verse 15. God has told us through Our Lady. Of Fatima that he has chosen Russia as an instrument for the peace and conversion of the world to spread and to protect the faith in the world. The mission is so great that Russia must be consecrated before embarking on such an enormous apostolic work, apostolate. Russia is not the problem but a solution given by God, instrument to spread the faith and to defend it. So this is what I'm saying about Russia. Let me speak about this consecration. Well, many of you here were ordained priests. The chalice is consecrated so that we can pour into it the precious blood of Christ, the pattern the same way. A bishop is consecrated so that he can do and fulfill the mission given to him
by God through his church. Now, Russia cannot do anything by itself. All that God is asking from us is that we consecrate Russia. Russia doesn't have to do anything. God will take care of Russia and the church. Even the bishops, the Pope, we are here. You know what, most of our talks will be about the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. What is the problem? Is that so difficult? We're going to spend all this week, whom are we teaching, whom are we telling? You know who? We are telling the, bishop, the Pope and the bishops to do their duty. But the solution is simple. Our Lady, God through Our Lady, is asking us one thing, that the Pope, together with all the bishops, must consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. That's all. That's all the Pope and the bishops have to do. Russia has nothing to do. We can help to pray that the Pope and the bishops have the courage, the determination to obey the demand of God. Now, what I'm saying is this. God has given is going to give, wants to give Russia a responsibility greater or equal to that that he gave to Paul. So we pray that the Pope and the bishops should do their work. If they don't, they will be like, you remember there was a prophet who refused when God sent him to convert Nineveh till God had to force him on the boat and vomit him on the, on the shore. That was Jonah. Let's pray that the Pope and the bishops don't have to be forced to be swallowed by a big whale. My friends, please, journalists who are here, tell the Russians that God has chosen Russia to convert the world and to preserve the faith in the world. They don't have to do anything. All that we need, God should do his work through the Pope and the bishops, that's all. And the rest, God will take care of Russia. Remember, I'm saying this, there is the work this responsibility that God through Mary wants to give to Russia is very great. No ordinary nation can do that. Russia by itself has, hasn't got that power. That power will come only through Our Lady, through the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And he said, she said it. So this is what we are going to work upon these days. Now the situation in which we live is so bad. Now before I finish that lesson, we, we, we uh, God chose St. Paul as his chosen instrument to bring his name to pagans and pagan kings. And before the prophet of Israel, this we read from the Acts of Apostles, <coughs> verse 15. Our God has told us through Our Lady of Fatima that he has chosen Russia as an instrument for the peace and the conversion of the world, for to spread and to protect the faith in the world. Is there anything greater than that for Russia? So that's why this mission is so great we have to consecrate 
make Russia fit to accomplish such a great mission in the world and in the church. Now, let me come to you about the situation in which we are. There's a big talk these days about the new world order. The new world order is empire, empire of the devil, the rulers of the world, rulers of great strong nations work for the creation of the new world order. And they don't hide it. The presidents of the United States said it openly. The Americans who are here, look at the back of your one note dollar. At the back of that dollar is written New World Order in Latin. It is written, go ahead and look at it. At the back, below the pyramid, there is New World Order in Latin. You don't know what it is. But they don't hide it. The President of the United States and others, they say they work not for the United States, but for the New World Order. But you don't know what that means. That means the new empire of the devil. What does that mean? It means there will be one government, one monetary system, and one religion. Let's speak about the government. Europe has one European Parliament in Strasbourg in France. Africa has one African Parliament between Pretoria and Johannesburg. So these continental parliaments are coming up. So in the future, there will be no American Parliament. There will be, not, not United States Parliament, North American Parliament, then the World Parliament. All the nations are going to lose their supremacy. Then let's come to the uh, power. You may not be aware, the world already has an international Supreme Court in The Hague, in Holland, the Netherlands. The Africans, you have President Taylor there. Bosnia, so you have the former president of uh, Bosnia and so on, who has hidden himself for 10 years, but he is now arrested. That court is above any other court in the world. After the Lord King to arrest the president of Sudan. They're going to do it. Three politicians of, of Kenya are actually in The Hague. So that court has more power than any other court in the world. Now let's come to the money. In Europe, the mighty Deutsche Mark is gone. We have Euro. We have one central bank, and you know, in the world, we already have the World Bank and IMF. Who controls the world money? When the euro problem, IMF has to be involved to solve that problem. So the money, there'll be one monetary system, then religion. There will be no Muslims, no Protestants, but one religion. All these three will form part of one government, one empire, governed, ruled by one person, not God, but the devil. And the story is that the headquarters will be in, in, in Jerusalem. So the devil is working, and they don't make it, they don't hide it. Just I don't know what happens. They make us not to understand what's going on. It doesn't matter how educated you are. 
we don't understand what's going on. So this is the religion, there will be one religion, it is true. At the end of times, there will be one religion only, not, not the one of, of the devil. But that before, all, all these things cannot happen as long as the Catholic Church exists. All this new age world cannot happen as long as the Catholic Church is strong and working. And the dead will never defeat the Catholic Church. But if we don't work hard, we shall, the Pope himself, the bishops, and the church will have to suffer a lot. But we have to do something which doesn't need any suffering, just a prayer. Consecrate Russia to the Muglitat of Mary. So this is what the devil is working for, an international empire that is governed by one great ruler, the devil. So this is one item that I would like you to understand that things are not that simple as they appear. So this is the situation in which, in which we are. I want you to understand we are in a very terrible, now coming back. In 1917, when our lady appeared to the three children of Fatima, the first world war was on, raised by the Germans. Then our lady came in 19, June 1929 to ask for the consecration of Russia, not Germany. He knew that the 1914 war, First World War was on account of the Germans, and she knew and she had foretold that the Second World War would be coming and be started by the Germans. But she did not ask for the consecration of Germany. Do you know why? The, the German situation is immaterial, in material situation. But the Russians had a spiritual fight. A spiritual fight. Germany was nothing. Even now, Russia, many of you believe that Russia is useless. You don't know, you don't understand what's going on. That's why our lady is still insisting that we must consecrate Russia to the Immaculate of Mary. Unless we do that, nothing good is going to happen. But through the mighty power of God, it will happen. Time will come when the Pope and the Bishop will have suffered enough. And they will say, let's go down to Our Lady. Let us consecrate Russia to, our, to the Immaculate of Mary. You see, my friends, I, I went to the Vatican telling, tell, speaking about this, some of the secrets I'm mentioning to you. In 2009, I visited the Vatican with my team. One of my team is in here. Three times in March, June, and November. Tell them the same story, the crisis in which the world and the church are. So I visited 43 cardinals and archbishops. Finally, some of them were converted. And they advised me that what we are talking about is very important. And they cannot express this sufficiently to the Holy Father. So they advised us to make an appointment with the Pope to explain to him our position. So I have applied for audience with the Holy Father to explain to him what is happening in the church. Or in the Vatican, some of my friends, Bishop there, they call me the famous Bishop Paul Horai. So this is the situation in which we are. We are not fighting losing war. We're working ourselves, but not defending ourselves.
not defending God and his church with the instruments that he gives us. What do you hope for? The, deck, the devil is trying to take over. So this is just the situation in which we are and uh, Let me tell you the situation in which we are. I divide the Bible into first session, the creation and the fall of man. From Adam and Eve and Eve to John the Baptist. Then the time of redemption, from the time of John the Baptist to the ascension of Christ. Then the third session, the establishment of the church from Pentecost Sunday up to now. Now we have come to the end of establishing the church. Going forward to the next world. We have been given enough time. So our letters has appeared in many I'm not going to say everything that I've written here. I'll give you one example. If you could read the misery of our lady was La Salette in France. You'll be terrified. Our lady of La Salette speaks everything. The cardinal against the God, cardinal, bishop of, of, against bishop, priest against bishops, parents against one. Total disorder in the world. One big thing that our lady and God complains about is the work on Sundays. You know, on Sundays, people don't go to church anymore. They go to the supermarkets to offer sacrifice to their God, the devil. On Sundays, then what it also says, God says, I gave you Six days to work for yourselves. And I ask just for one day. And you cannot give me that one day. Why not? I mean, that is serious. That this is a commandment from God. He has asked us to give him that just one day for our good and our family. No, we don't, we refuse. We well, like you to know that we are, good, we are being punished. A lot of wars that we see and are had taken place it is because we refuse to give just one day to God a week. I have to tell you, some of you do it without knowing. With ignorance, you can do many things. But you know, this is a commandment from God, not the commandment of the church. So to, what I'm saying is the devil is working very hard, and we are doing nothing. We are sitting down peacefully as if everything now, I spoke about the prophecy. St. Patrick Tenth spoke about the prophecy in the Vatican and so on, Don Bosco and so on. Those who are from the United States and America, you have the, the Mayans. They prophesied many years ago that between 1992 and 12, 2012 will be a time of purification. Time of purification. We are now going to those old Americans in the time of purification. And John Paul, the Pope, no, yes, the, the blessed John Paul, when in Germany in 1984 said, the time of purification is near. We cannot stop it. We can ask God to mitigate that we don't suffer too much, but, but it's coming. So all, all that I'm saying is that, I repeat again, we are here, according to me, for one purpose. I don't know if you can say we pray with that God gives the Pope and the bishops the grace to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And I wanted to tell the bishop that Bishop Paul Horace says they are a chosen nation. And God is asking nothing from them except that we should do the consecration of Russia to Our Lady 
and our lead in God will do the rest. This is uh, see, the theme of my talk to you. There may be many other things that we can talk about, but for me, I, I'm aware that we speak so much about the uh, about the uh, revolution, all other things. Now let's be, speak about the earthquakes and all that. What is happening? All this has been, have, has been pr predicted. This has been predicted. I was in, in 1999, I was in Hamilton. The Red Indians say they feel that a terrible earthquake is coming. <coughs> Science says every 10,000 years, a terrible earthquake takes place and destroys a big part of the world. Since the last earthquake is now 10,000 years. So the next terrible earthquake should happen between now and 2014. This is science, not religion. So this, I want you to be aware that we are in a very situation in which God expects us to do something to save ourselves the church and the world and to do his will and to defeat the devil whom we seem to make him our friends instead of making God our friends. So God is it's, it's wonderful it's, uh, it's, that the Mayans in, in America I repeat again they said in December 21st 2012 is the end of this human civilization, not the world, human civilization. I saw this was in CNN about 15 years ago. One African, Afri Afri American and a white one. So it has been revealed to them that a big earthquake was coming. The whole world would be shaken. Some islands would disappear. They even gave some names of, the, of some countries, and they said the Pope will have to suffer much. Then they mentioned that a new era would come, different from what we have, with less problems and difficulties, but it is coming. So some asked, what is going to happen to the United States? Is it going to disappear? Said, no, the United States is not to disappear, it's going to be divided. This is what the people say, it has been revealed to them. What I'm telling you is this. Don't think that we're dreaming. We speak sense. We speak science. We speak religion. We speak God's wisdom and advice. So this is uh, the situation in which we find ourselves. And as I mentioned to you, that there are a lot of prophecies that have been some sins prayed and wished that they could be alive during this, our times, because it would be, it'd be a difficult, different world altogether. So this is my, uh, in short, I could speak more about this, but uh, I think this should be enough for you, but the theme for me really is the consecration of Russia. Without that consecration, Russia will never do anything except to destroy the world. Then to do such a magnificent work, which even a bishop has to be consecrated to do it. Russia needs that. If things don't turn around, around well, don't blame anybody. Blame yourselves, the Pope, and we, the bishops. Because we refuse. I know there are some French people here. In 1931, Jesus said, the Pope and the Bishop refused to obey the commandments of my mother. They will suffer than the King of France, Louis XIV. The French know, Christ asked Margaret Lecoq to ask the King to consecrate France into the Secretary of Jesus. The politicians told the king, this is not this is a church, your majesty. You are not a church, you are a government. 
live out all these dreams of the church. 100 years after exactly the French Revolution took place, the king was imprisoned, then he remembered what Christ has asked. He wanted to do something, it was too late. Then the French Revolution came. The old decapitated. There are no more kings, it called no, no more kings in France because the king and his advisors refused to obey Christ confidentially. I know that John Paul II, John Paul II tried his best to accomplish this, but he could not. He wanted to. You know, bishops and the Pope are not that free you know, because we have to consult our people. If, so all I'm telling you is that some pe bishops tried to, do, to accomplish this, but we have to accomplish, we have to use the people we have at our service. So please, pray that the Pope, the bishops, I'm one of them, should prepare Russia to the mission that God has prepared and wants to give to Russia by consecrating it. There's no other thing. Without that consecration, Russia is not going to do anything good except destruction. So I repeat, you journalist, tell them that black bishop there said, God has chosen Russia to save the world and the church. In the history, we read that Russia was once a great nation in religion. Those who don't know, even now, Russia pretends to be weak. It is not that weak. Those who know geopolitics, Russia is not that weak. They pretend to be very weak. So with these words, I'm saying, please pray and pray for me that I should persevere to do this work. I'll, I'll tell many people at home, they say, you bishop, why are you alone speaking about these things? Other bishops don't say all these dreams that you're talking about. So I, say, I don't know what the others are doing, but I'm doing what my God tells me to do. And I'll do it. And I know that I'm right. So with this, I just encourage you to pray. All you can do is nothing. You, can, you cannot consecrate Russia, but the Pope and the bishop can do it. And pray also that my intention, my application to speak with the Pope becomes a reality because I'm going to speak with the Pope about the ideas of the salvation of the world. So this is my welcoming speech on this occasion and be optimistic that God's going to use you to make you instruments. You know, you're not here by yourselves. If God did not want, you would not be here. I was in, on Monday, I was in the hospital. I came out only on Friday. The doctors had given hope that I would come here. But I was stubborn as usual. I said, I cannot neglect my mother and my, my God. I came. Here I am. I'm better than at home. Because I'm at home with Christ, Mary, Peter, and Paul. So with this world, Father, Father Nicholas Krumer, my friend, keep it up. Know that if you do well, the, Saturday, the devil will fight you. All of you fight till the end. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I have come to warn the faithful to amend their lives and ask pardon for their sins. They must not continue to offend our Lord, who is already deeply offended.
final vision on October 13, 1917, Our Lady silently held out the scapular, a gesture which indicates that she wants everyone to wear it. Our Lady said, if my requests are not heeded, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world, raising up wars and persecutions against the Church. The good will be martyred, 